there YouTubers, uh, back again today to talk a little bit more about some cool guns and in particular the Ruger LCP Max. Now this is a gun that is unloaded first of all, obviously. No clip in there, no bullets. Um, but this is a little gun that I wanted to do a review on because my LCP 222 review has got uh, a lot of traction. Um, and so I thought you guys might be interested in the LCP Max. Now, I picked this gun up almost the day it was released. It was literally the first week that it was out and available to the public. I went and hunted this down. And I got it from an Academy Sports and, and got a good deal on it. And took it out and started shooting it a couple days later. Um, I soon realized that it was not necessarily shooting straight. So as I'm sure you can tell in the title to this video, I've had some problems with this gun. But before I get too deep into it, I wanna say that without a doubt, Ruger's customer service could not possibly be any better. Uh, those folks really have got it together. They do a wonderful job. They really took care of me in a super quick fashion. They got what I needed out to me, got this little gun where it worked right. And overall, even though it wasn't necessarily functioning properly when I got it out of the box the first time, it is now. And I'm really super happy with, with the way it works at this point and with the overall experience I've had with this gun. Um, now, like a lot of you folks probably know, uh, I've got the LCP-2 and the 22 uh, long rifle, and I've been super happy with that. I've put a ton of rounds through it, and I'm still putting rounds through it. Uh, sometimes I carry that gun, but most of the time these days, I carry this LCP Max, which is chambered in the 380 Auto. It's uh, 12 rounds, which is actually two more than the... LCP2 in the 22 um, with these with this extended clip here, and I've got this one loaded up. This is the only 12 round clip I've got. Uh, this is the 10 round clip that comes with it, and as you can see, it fits super flush, and it's really, for all intents and purposes, no bigger or bulkier than the LCP2. I mean, you can find videos where people are comparison comparing them side by side, so. I don't think I need to go into great detail about that. It's a tiny bit thicker, and I do mean a tiny bit thicker. But really, when you're carrying it around, uh, the extra, I don't know, ounce or so that, that it weighs and the, the very, very few millimeters of thickness that has added to it because of the double stack clip, it's not really noticeable. I mean, the, the 22 version of the LCP2 is ultimately conceivable and ultimately carryable. I don't think there's a better choice on the market these days for hiding something in your clothing uh, and not knowing it's there. Uh, but this is about your second best choice that you could possibly have. And there's a lot of things that I like about this gun. But before I get into that, I want to touch on several points. I don't want to make this video super long, so I'm going to try to get through these things. Number one, let's talk about the problems that I had with it and what Ruger did to fix this. So when I got this gun, I noticed right away that it was not shooting straight. Uh, the point of aim was not anywhere close to hitting where you think it would hit. It was shooting super, super far to the left and, and really low. And honestly, at about 10 yards, I could barely hit the target, period. So you had to aim completely off of the target to get the thing to hit. And even then, it was relatively inconsistent. So I called up Ruger because I've actually had to send several guns back from a few different manufacturers, but uh, specifically Taurus. But um, I, I had good experiences with them. And so I called up Ruger. I didn't send them an email. I got on the phone with them. They were very, very easy to deal with. I dealt with a, a nice young lady who took the information she needed and said, we're going to send you right out a new barrel, a new slide. And I'd had... A little bit of an issue with the stock clip that came with it, the stock magazine not locking the slide back. Now, could that have been related to the defective slide that I got to begin with? I don't know. But they sent me two replacement magazines, the 10-round magazines, which I thought was super awesome. 
I had one that was not working right and they sent me two to replace it. It's hard to beat that. Now, they didn't overnight that those parts, but they didn't have to wait for me to send something to them and inspect it and then send it back. They literally put that stuff in UPS, I think it was, or FedEx, one of those guys, and, and shipped that out the next day. And I got it just a couple days later and replaced the entire side and the barrel. Um, and everything was immediately fine. It shot straight. It did exactly what you think it would do. And I was so utterly impressed by their <laughs> quick and prudent customer service that, you know, here, here in America, not to, to hate on anything, but we deal with a lot of corporate interests here. Um, you know, corporations have taken over um, largely and, and run the show. And so we're more or less at the mercy of what some kind of business wants to do. And most of these businesses, they don't really care about an individual customer. They just want to take care of their own interest in the best way that they can. But Ruger is definitely not one of those companies. And I talked to several of my friends. I had a couple of people that had a problem with a, a rifle or something from time to time. Not that Ruger has a lot of customer service issues. But every single person that I've talked to that has had to deal with them, Ruger almost immediately or even overnight was sending out parts to replace something that, that could have been defective and, and took care of everybody in the best way possible. Now, why was this defective? That's a question that I've asked several times. And, and like I said, I literally got this two or three days after it was available on the market. It was a gun that at Academy Sports, they said they had literally just set it out in the case when I went, came up and, and went to buy it. So there might have been some teething issues that Ruger was having, some barrels or, or some sides or something that weren't quite the way they were supposed to be just in that first run. And, you know, it, it's understandable. Um, it's not great. I mean, it doesn't make me feel super good. But at the same time, for them to turn around and just take care of those problems immediately without any kind of question. Now, I did send my, my original uh, components back to them. Not on my dime. They, they sent me a shipping label, so all I had to do was stick it in an envelope, send it back to them. Um, you know, what happened to those, who knows. But the, the, the moral of that story is, if you have a problem with a Ruger firearm, they're definitely going to stand behind their product. They're going to take care of you at least as good as anybody else possibly could. I was extremely impressed with that. So that issue to the side, problems and solutions for the LCP Max, um, I'm really happy with it at this point. Uh, I don't have any kind of modifications that I've done to this gun. The only thing I've done is upgraded to the 12 round magazine. So it's, it's, it's a 12 plus one at this point, which is a lot of lead that you can throw out of this thing if, if you need to at one time. I've got several of these 10 round clips now. I've got one that's defective. I didn't send, they didn't ask me to send the original one back. But sometimes it locks the side open, sometimes it doesn't. But it hasn't had any trouble feeding, is the thing. I never had any kind of a failure to feed, failure to fire. Uh, I haven't had any kind of uh, malfunctions with this gun outside of the fact that, that with a stock barrel and side it wouldn't hit the broad side of a barn. Um, but now, since it's been fixed, I've probably put 200 rounds to it. And... Um, I've been a little bit more actively shooting it. I've, I've gone out of my way to get some 380 ammo specifically just to test the functionality of this gun in real time. And I'm sure I've probably already cut some of that into uh, the footage of this video and I'll put some more in there as well. Um, I don't use any kind of special 380 ammo. I mean, if you guys know anything about it, you know this is basically just a shorter shelled 9mm and we all should be pretty clear on the viability of this size round at this point. If somebody's telling you that this is not good enough for self-defense against a human being, um, they're, they're living in a, in a bizarre fantasy world somewhere and, and, or either they've just got some really bad information. I mean, that's too, true as it could be true as well. Uh, like probably most of you that are watching this know, I, sometimes I carry the LCP, to 22 and and I don't feel 
unprotected with that. And with this, you certainly got a lot more firepower at your disposal, but it, it is snappy to shoot this. It, it, it's a snappier gun and it's harder to control and put on target as quickly as the 22. There's no doubt about that because the weight is almost the same. And, and really for me, I've got kind of bigger hands and, and it's, it's just, it's a little harder to get a good grip on it. Again, this is an unloaded clip, um, but that's the stock clip. And, and so my pinky doesn't come into play at all. So you really kind of have to forget about that. And it's not hard to shoot, but it, it's, it poses um, some level of difficulty above and beyond what the 22 does. And it really, when you break it down and talk to the real experts, the viability difference between these in a self-defense situation is, is debatable, but um, it's, it's somewhat negligible. So the other point I wanted to bring up today, besides just the fact that this is a good gun, it's a good value, it's a really good price uh, for wh what you get for this. Um, you get one of the Ruger pocket holsters with it. This is not it. This is the one that I carry around with me. It's kind of a little bit more texturized. I think I have the Ruger uh, pocket holster in my vehicle right now, but it, it fits really well in, in these little pocket holsters. Now this one doesn't fit quite as good as the 22 because it's got, as you can see, it's bunching up a little bit here. Um, I've got one that fits it's kind of broken into this gun a little bit better and it fits. This is the one I use with the 22, but it's not quite as, as smooth going in there in this aftermarket one as the 22 version is, but it works well with the one that's broken in for it. But the real key here, as far as holsters go, is the lock leather holster. Now, this is from Urban Carry. Uh, this is their lock leather uh, I don't know if it's copyrighted or, or whatever, registered trademark or whatnot, but that, if you just go to the Urban Carry Holsters website and look up their lock leather stuff, this is an awesome inside the waistband or outside the waistband if you get that model uh, holster for, for really any gun. I've got a few of these and I, I like them a lot. These are the best things that I've got as far as carry holsters go. It's a leather holster. It's, it's got the nice padding here, um, not necessarily padding, but it's got the nice tab that comes up so it doesn't, the actual firearm doesn't rub against your body. But it's got a little mechanism in there, a little plastic mechanism that actually locks the gun in the holster. And I can shake it out of here because I've got it adjusted kind of light, but I've really got to put some effort into doing that. And so when you're carrying this, especially inside your waistband, it adds another element of security to the whole thing and, and knowing that that gun's not going to flop out or fall out. And it's just a really high quality piece. I've had this for a while. It's easy to draw out of it. You can adjust the tension. I mean, I don't work for these people. So again, this is an unbiased uh, report on this piece of equipment, but they're not cheap. I think, I don't know, $80 or something like that to the door. But, um, I've got a lot of holsters, man, and most of them are just in a pile in my closet somewhere and I don't ever get them out because they, let's be honest, they kind of suck. Uh, I've got some Kydex holsters that, that lock that are good that I like, but I've got other ones that, that leave marks on the gun and I don't really use those at all. I don't want my gun to have a bunch of marks on it. And if you can see with this one, where it locks is right in this area here and it does not have any marring at all where that plastic is touching the polymer of the frame. You really can't tell that it's been in any kind of a holster at all. It looks just like it's going in and out of a leather holster. And most of the time that I carry this gun these days, I don't actually carry it in this holster, even though I like it a whole lot. Most of the time when I'm carrying this gun these days, uh, it's in a little 511 bag a little shoulder bag, my, my pocketbook, so to speak. Um, a little 511 thing where I've got a, a Velcro holster inside there that I carry this in. And I, I'm not going to put it on camera because I don't really want people to know what it looks like when I'm carrying my gun around, to be honest. Um, I want it to be concealed and it's kind of one of those secret ones where it's got like a secret pouch in it. But if, if you're not familiar with 511's gear, man, they make some really good clothes for sure. And they make some cool bags. And so a lot of the times if I'm at work or something like that, I don't want people 
to know that I've got this. I do a lot of sitting, unfortunately. And so the inside of the waistband, if I'm carrying it appendix, um, I'm getting fat in my old age and it can get uncomfortable after a while. You know, it's poking on things in that area and, and that's not super fun. So lots of times I have it in my little shoulder bag, but this is a super good piece of equipment. If you're out there looking for new holsters, check out these Urban Carry Lock Leather holsters. Um, I couldn't be happier with this this piece of gear right here. It's really cool. Now, sometimes I just carry it in a pocket because it is small enough. And in that case, I use the the uh, little pocket holster that Ruger sent with it because they're actually pretty high quality. Like I said, this is just the one that I use with my 22. It's the only one I had in the house. I didn't want to walk outside again. It's kind of raining a little bit tonight. Um, but overall, LCP Max, I'm sure I've already cut some footage of me shooting this into this video but i'll cut some more this is a really good gun for self-defense not something that you're going to want to take to the range to necessarily spend all day shooting because it's not that much fun to shoot but it's a really viable choice for self-defense either out in public as a concealed carry or even at home uh, the 380 rounds these days have got plenty of stopping power. I'm using some hollow points here um, in this one right now. And there's a lot of choices out there. Get some of those Liberty, you know, civil defense rounds, man. They're really moving out of there a million miles an hour. Um, and they'll tear some stuff up real good. But overall, super happy with the Ruger. And uh, thanks for watching my video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't checked out my LCP 222 reviews, uh, I'll link those in the description there, and I've got some other cool stuff coming up. Hopefully some some good hunting stuff with me and my 44 Magnum pistol and some Smith & Wesson things coming up. If you're into Smith & Wesson revolvers, I've got a few of those, so I'll do some reviews of those guys. And also some Taurus reviews that I've been working on. So I've got a few of those coming up, so stay tuned to the channel. You know what everybody on YouTube says, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. If you want to do that, I sure do appreciate it. If you don't, I'm, you know, I'm, it's not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, but I hope everybody had a great holiday. We're shooting this just right after Christmas. And I um, hope you guys have a great new year. And maybe 2022 will bring us a new level of common sense uh, gun ownership and gun rights. And we'll continue to do a whole bunch of shooting. So I'll see you out on the range. Later. Thank you.